So Last Boss Queen is a new Otome game villainess show where Truck-kun comes in, Isekai's a girl, and now she is now the villainess of the story. We've been seeing more and more of these stories pop up, but the thing I will give this show major credit for is actually sticking out and doing things that are different than the past few that I've been seeing. And while I've enjoyed Atoma Game, the My Next Life as a Villainess with Baccarina, that was a very funny show, a nice little twist on what to expect. This show, despite so many characters and designs and feelings about this first episode, you'd say, oh yeah, I've seen this before. I have to hand it, they actually went rather dark and more mature than I was expecting with this first episode. And the idea of actually diving into how twisted and evil this character is. Like, obviously, our girl is clearly not going to be someone who forces people to kill their family just for the lols, but the idea of constantly throughout this episode, rather than just going the flashback of, oh, here's the, the twisted laugh, they made servants do bad things. No, like, this character was evil, and they hammer that in all throughout this episode, and it's the little moments, like, the idea of, like, the first time she wakes up after being, obviously, reincarnated as this character, the servants, if she makes a single move, are, like, flinching, because pr they probably get their ass beat every other day if they just say the- if they sneeze around her. Like, she clearly screwed with this world, and I'm really interested to see where they take it, because this first episode, it didn't rush into anything, it took its time, and honestly, was a lot more mature and dark than I was anticipating. And to be honest, this is the most I've ever rooted from a first episode with an Atoma game villainess twist with the main character because I am here for pride in her journey and I'm here to say please do yourself a favor don't sleep on this one it is really really good now I do have a full live reaction to this wonderful first episode available on my patreon if you would like to see that you can head on over there and consider supporting I'll be covering it every week over there no matter what Hopefully it does well on YouTube so we can talk about it here as well. So obviously let me know if you want to see more of it here as well. So like I said, this is a much more mature take than some of the recent ones that we've gotten. And I've heard some good things about the source material. Now, granted, I do hear that about pretty much any of these shows that get come out. There will always be at least one person in my comments saying, actually, I read the source. It's great. It's different. But to be honest, I usually don't feel as strongly. And I know there's some great light novels and mangas and that tackle these types of things. But I feel like we're now getting into the territory of really scratching some of the greats in this department. Because, I mean, all the isekai that are more fantasy-oriented about, oh, let's go kill a demon king, they mostly have the same establishing premise, and then they, the good ones, they branch off and do their own thing. So... A show like this, immediately feeling familiar from character designs, or, oh, she was someone who played a game or know of the game, that's fine for me. It's all about how they execute it, and if they go a comedic direction, like, say, Baccarina did, of course, I'm going to laugh and enjoy that. But I was hoping for something a little more serious, a little more mature, and that's exactly what they gave me. I thought the production was solid enough, the VAs did a great job, but to me, it was so interesting seeing the background story. So... Like I say, like when she first wakes up, the servants, the maids, they are terrified because, and yeah, okay, like it's not the first time we know these characters are usually pretty bad. But once you get deeper into the episode and you think back of how like they were flinching, you really understand what this character was capable of prior to our girl taking over Pride's body because she is a bitch like that's the best way to put it like that is pure evil so we get this boy stale who comes in he's handcuffed because he has teleportation so he, when he wasn't handcuffed he was trying to run away ultimately in the game before our girl took over this body what would have happened is there's this contract to basically be obedient she switched the contract to be something way worse and way more no matter what you have to do everything i say and later in the episode we see that she literally made him kill his own mother this woman was an evil wench and holy hell it is night and day difference with how she's treating him like the first night she tries to give him the key so that he can go visit his mom and he basically says like if i run away someone else will just be taken in my place i don't want to put that on them and just like it's hard it's tragic royalty bs where basically you are a servant and your life is a lot less than the 
next future heir. And I think what's interesting is how they handled her personality shift because obviously characters who are flinching at the thought of her rustling in bed because, oh, she can't fall asleep, so therefore she'll probably beat us and take it out on us. They go from thinking, what an evil spoiled brat to, wow, she feels like she got blessed by the goddess. Well, then again, if her abilities of seeing things that have yet to come, maybe that did just make her personality more fitting. And honestly, it's a pretty easy way to accept a personality shift like that if you are in a world where certain people are blessed by abilities and if her abilities did just awaken that could cause a personality shift especially if they view it as like the gods or goddesses of their world kind of doing something it's just a smartly written first episode it immediately makes you excited to see more of this girl more of her world, and rather than just rushing into here's her harem or anything like that, instead, you took it slow. You really got to understand her and, of course, Stale's personalities. The father was an interesting idea as well. Like, her first moment was, like, saying, like, oh, he would have died because the wheel was broken, and then the mom would have shortly died after, and obviously we can see if that would have been her next in line in the game. Yeah, that, sh that would have been crazy. That would have been pure evil. And I like the fact that all throughout the episode, they really show these moments in this kind of fuzzy, kind of widescreen flashback, and it really gets you to understand, damn, she was a wench. And honestly, I appreciate the fact, because when you have villainess in the title, like, you know, you're reborn as the villainess, I feel like the ones that have come out recently haven't really dove into the twistiness and how messed up the character actually was. And I think, had you played a game, and now you're this person, I feel like you'd, you'd kind of be split of like one trying to avoid the horrible things, but also being just fearful. And as seen by the end of the episode, she's literally crying on his, on his chest being like, if I turn evil, kill me. Like that's her, that's her wish to this boy, is that if I get too twisted, kill me, because she knows what this character can become with one wrong move. And honestly, that's got to do something to your mental abilities to even function as a normal person, let alone being probably a pretty kind person in your first life, now in an evil wench's body, what that does to your who am I anymore, I have to hand it, this was actually a brilliant first episode. Like anyone looking for something that actually feels new and interesting, I have to hand it to it. Despite having these villainess otome game anime over the past few years, there's been a couple, I really feel like this one is the most interesting from a first episode alone. While there's not a lot of humor in this episode, it really wears the maturity on its sleeve and makes it say like, this is going to be a fascinating one to follow, and I'm just happy it's not airing on the weekend, because these types of shows usually are like a Saturday show or something, and the weekends are always too busy. I'd rather just watch Jujutsu Kaisen and this one on a Thursday, enjoy my time, and go on with my day, and hopefully that will lead to maybe more viewership, but only time will tell. Like I said, if you would like to see more videos on this on the main channel, because of course I'm going to cover it on Patreon no matter what, you got to show me that support because I would love to continue to talk about this one. I think this will be an underdog for sure. But let me know what you thought down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Of course, ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload more videos to the channel. And like I mentioned, full live reaction to this and all future episodes of this wonderful show will be available on my Patreon. And hey, while you're there, you can also get a video shout out. So today we have San Htun, Noah Kors, Sologiki, and Dylan Sullivan. So I appreciate the support, everyone. And please take care and have a good one.